Last year, we went to Europe for the first time in our motorhome and found out when we were there that the callow gas bottles that come with the motorhome are not compatible with the gas bottles in France, Germany or Spain or anywhere else that I can think of. One of the things that came up, um, looking at uh, various websites and um, Facebook groups, is that refillable bottles is the way to go. So this video is how I've gone about researching the bottles and my experience of um, buying them and fitting them. So uh, from this point onwards, I will show you the buying process and then we'll move on to the fitting. This is the cupboard for my gas bottles and as you can see it's quite snug so I didn't feel I had very many options if any options at all other than two six kilogram bottles because six kilograms is quite a small one compared to some of the sizes some motorhomes have. One thing that did come in useful is that the bottom of this the base of floor is just above the fairings and that as you will see has come in very useful and allowed me to fit very easily an external refilling point which is quite critical because there are problems with refilling where you have to open the door some garages don't like it uh, I believe that's the same on the continent as over here in the UK Maybe that is, maybe that isn't the um, situation, but enough people are warned against that. Plus, I'm sure they wouldn't have external fillers if it wasn't something that was um, a good idea to have. So that's what I'm going for. I did a search for refillable gas tank systems, and the ones I was looking for were safe fill, but I found that they only filled up into the tank itself although I rather like the fact that they've got a clear side and you can see how much gas is in them but that's not a, a deal breaker. Gaslow was my next one and they do have uh, meters about for um, selling how much is gas is in there and they're quite accurate I believe and the third one was gas it and this is the one I went for because in the end the price was £300 cheaper and uh, there was a, also a three week wait for the tanks which would have got in the way of a, a journey we're planning. So I went for two six kilo, the twin six kilogram refillable angle. This is for putting inside the door so that when you open the door you'd have this bracket standing up and then you could refill. But as I was saying I can put this upside down on mine and I could going to fit it round about here, possibly here, see when I get there, but so that it will protrude just enough underneath for me to get a filler to it. And that would give me the um, external filler that I need. This was the one that I went for. I ordered it over the weekend. Today's Wednesday and it will be arriving. So when that comes, I will video the contents as I take it out of the pack and see what's there and consider how I'm going to go about fitting it. We've just arrived and I've got three boxes. Two look like the gas tanks and I would take it that that's all of the fittings. So let's have a look and see what's in them. So I've uh, got the fittings and I've loosely put them onto the places they go to. So the bag's now got the adapters in. I put the case on the uh, filler and at the back we've got the fitting there. This is an olive side. That will need some flexible pipe. This goes into the regulator. These two little clips are the back of the gauges, which aren't very accurate, so I understand, but better than nothing. But I will have to consider how they go into the van so that I can see them. We've got the tails that go from the outlet to the change of valve. This goes out into the uh, regulator. At the back, these are the fillers, and this again is a an olive fitting, and this will go in between them, the T, and all of those require some of the flexible hose. So I need to consider what I'm doing. And um, having measured the uh, tanks in my van, 
I can see they're exactly the same height as the ones I bought. And when I take off the tops, that should make life a bit uh, a bit easier with it giving me some more room to manoeuvre. So there's the kit. I will have to buy, buy or get some appropriate screws, uh, bolts for this, and well, I'll see what I've got for that self tappers or where I'm going to fit it to. But um, that's possibly even okay, loose. We'll see. Okay, so tomorrow we'll get on and have a look and um, see how that goes. This is the gas compartment, and as you'll see <clears throat> in my van, it's all quite snug, so it's not as if I've got a lot of room. Uh, although I've just seen something that I think is going to be very useful, and that is that we've got a vent at the front, but more importantly, a vent down the back there, which is where I'm going to pass the pipe through, and that will be nice and easy to do. So, next stage, get that cleared and see what we're, space we're working with. So I've now taken everything out and you'll see there's not too bad uh, an amount of space. So one of the things that uh, I noticed that when I've taken off the gas in, that's this one, it's the same fitting as the ones we've got uh, with the kit. But now what is handy is I see that we've got a hole here. Oh, it goes into an exposed area. So I'm going to feed the gas tap pipe through there and I'm going to fit the holder around about here somewhere. So next thing to do is get the bottles in and see where I can put the um, changeover unit. So I've now put the gasset tanks in and uh, it is quite snug. Now I was initially thinking I would put this regulator in the middle because that's sort of nice neat place but of course having done that you can see that the outlet is just above the regulator so I can't do that so I've got to find another position um, a chap from uh, Gasset said that uh, you might be able to put it onto the uh, onto the top but um, we'll see so it's a little bit more snug the other thing I noticed is that I thought it would be a good idea to have the gas inlet pipes facing each other, then I could have a small T just here. But I don't think that's not going to work because the outlets, which are stiff, uh, solid pipe, that would be too tight to bend it round and then get up into the regulator. So I'm going to have to do a bit of thinking about this. I'm just gathering up all the things that I need and the first job I'm going to do is take the uh, carrying handles off of the gas tanks and so um, I'll do that and uh, show you what they look like when I've finished. So I just need to add that all of these fittings here I've just put on finger tight, not very tight but I just connected them all up so I want to make sure it works. That'll be the milk worry. Um, so, just want to point out that the uh, I've put that there. You can see the wedges underneath because I wanted to make sure it worked and I wanted to make sure I could fit these pipes from both sides up into the uh, changeover unit without having any hard kinks. Um, I'm going to have to have a bit more flexibility at the back with the filling pipes, but then that's okay. It uh, it does bend. It bends. Uh, it's quite it's quite bend. You know, obviously don't want a tight bend in it, but it is more flexible. Um, one thing about putting it like this is that I should be able to see the get the gas um, indicators for the level indicators. So uh, that's beneficial. Okay, let's move on. It's the bracket inside, but then realised that the fairing comes back further than the door so it's going to be as you can see an underneath job to get it going 
the holes are now drilled and I'm going to fit the filler now so that I can get it all nicely tightened up before I fit the bracket underneath. Okay, so I've now fitted the unit. Um, I've used flat headed um, screw style nuts and bolts, so it is a nut and the uh, it is a bolt and the nuts are have the nylon washer integrated in them so that they're non-slip and they've been cranked up very very tightly so wish it's certainly really nice and tight there and if I just pull off the cover we've got our filler nicely and it's out of the way too it's under the put that back on and then it's under the, under the uh, fairing with the door closed we've got a nice little uh, just a nice little piece coming through that's out of the way so as you can see I've got the screw uh, for the flexible pipe and I'm going to take that around a gentle curve and then up through here and I suspect I'm going to put the T-junction somewhere around about here so that my pipes can do what the other pipes are doing and that's uh, describe a gentle arc up to the um, tank so coming up like that and into the tank uh, vice versa okay right so let's just have a little breather and I think it's tanks back in and see where I want to put the T you need to remember is that before you put the pipe with the olive on and tighten that up you need to tighten this up first because once you've got the pipe on it and you try to turn it the pipe won't twist so this pipe is not going to twist once it's fixed on so once once that pipe's fixed on it's not going to twist this is very solid so I'm going to do this up and I'm going to do it up on the other first and certainly you don't want to forget when you do that on the filler because that's in um, that's tight in with uh, the bracket so it makes it uh, more difficult but either way you don't want to be tightening up the big brass fittings when you're uh, after you've done fitted up the olives okay if you're wondering how I've cut the pipe then what I've used is a strong Stanley knife and a block so that it's uh, raised and slight sawing motion now you can get uh, cutters pipe cutters for these um, and if you've got one all the better but the cut you get is very clean but I suggest you uh, practice that a couple of times before um, on, the, on the very end of the pipe just before you actually uh, start making critical cuts but it works just fine but only if you've got a really strong if you have just a flimsy uh, slide out type of knife then I wouldn't want you to use those they bend and don't have the strength in my opinion so this is the arrangement I've gone for. Now I've just held the T uh, connector in place with some uh, electrical tape until I get a bit later on. I will put some cable ties on it. But so the cables come out. Now what they do is cross, come out and then they cross over beneath the uh, the automatic changeover valve and then each end can go onto one of the pipes filler pipes so that's what it looks like all in all and i'm now going to put bottles in fix those and fit those pipes which will only leave the pipes to the uh, automatic changeover valve to go on something i want to point out is that you definitely want to make sure you put the nut part of the joint on first and the olive is actually got a split in it uh, because it's a it's compressing the pipe onto the fitting rather than 
forming the fitting itself. You want to make sure you do that to both sides because it can be a bit of a disaster if you don't. The tapering side goes in towards the nut because that's what's sliding down onto. Um, I think if you get that bit wrong then you're likely to be back onto um, the website to order some more. Now I marked up the um, position which is just as well I did because you can see there now what I've done is turn the tank so that it's made it easier for me to connect this one I've put the retaining straps around this because we're nearly there so now that's tightened up and what I would suggest is you make sure you tighten these things up as much as you can by with your fingers because if you've cross threaded it and then put a spanner onto it you're in trouble so the fact that you can get halfway done up with your fingers is a good indication that um, it's all going on smoothly okay so just gonna shift that back so that's where I wanted it to be the reason I wanted it to be there was so this tail can come out and go up into there in the same way so um, I'm going to put both tanks in connect them all up and then put the tails onto the um, changeover valve so I've now got the filling pipes in place and everything tightened up I've got uh, the T-junction down there which gives me a nice big curve and those big curves go underneath I put a wooden block in there just to hold them in place and that goes around onto there and that was easy to do that was easy to do. I did turn them back in the position so that I could get uh, a spanner onto them easier. And as you can see, they're now back in the position that uh, I decided or worked out earlier on. Because I can only see one tank uh, filler properly, then what I'm going to do, and this is what I've done, I've turned the dial, as you can see, going to the right, which then makes that the primary tank so that's not what I want so I'm going to twist that around so that it makes the other tank the primary tank so pointing that way means it's making the right hand tank the primary so when I start seeing now when that runs out I won't be able to see particularly well but when this one starts going down, I know the primary tank's um, empty already. So that, that can make it work. When the kit came, I thought everything was there that I would need. But as it turns out, there was something missing or more to the point, there was a part that I didn't realize I needed. So the part on the black pipe on the left is what I've had to order. And the pipe on the right, the orange one, is the fitting for the uh, normal colour gas. And you'll see by the, the end on that. Um, this is what I needed because both ends, as you see, are the same female. And the fitting that we're looking at here, the orange one is the one that goes on to the regulator from colour. So what I needed was the same fitting to go on to the regulator and the same fitting to go on to the changeover valve. What, what it came with was this, which is a, a sort of connector, both female connector, which I could see um, that uh, some maybe some uh, different... Uh, bottles have that but um, I'm a bit surprised because if you've got color then you're going to have this kind of fitting anyway I've got them all now everything's uh, together so then my next job is to um, just fit this on and then I'm ready to fill So, I'm now going to fit the final piece of kit, and that is from the changeover valve to the regulator. This is the piece of kit 
that uh, I didn't have yesterday and I've got to say the guys at Gasset really good someone called Gareth and he um, got put me on to uh, WhatsApp got the video out I showed him what the problem was he immediately said what it was and so uh, and got this in the post so literally yesterday afternoon to first thing this morning so just kind of fit that and um, see what it's like there we have the pipe fitted to the changeover and it just twists around and goes up into the regulator two minute job and the um, they do screw on very easily and I think it's a good idea that you make it as tight as you can uh, with your fingers and then just pinch it up because too much pressure will uh, possibly could damage the uh, the washers and so there's my little bottle of gas gas leak detector so my next job is to go along to the filling station and fill it up so what I think I'll do is because you've got two sections you've got the inlet pipe going from there so I need to test that joint the T joint see the T joint at the back there and then where they go into the tanks themselves so I need to check those for leaks whilst it's filling and then I can check the regular outlets when it's full because I can turn the gas off so although I think there might be issues with having the door open and that we're going to do it anyway and I suppose in the long run if there are any leaks whilst it's filling it is only when it's filling and not um, not afterwards it won't be there's no return valves so uh, that won't be anything to, to worry about after coming away from the filling and as you can see there are plenty of uh, there's plenty of ventilation down here there's one there there's one there and there's another one down there so no no shortage of ventilation so next thing let's go and see about filling it uh, one thing i will say before i go on here the adapter as you can see is a bayonet type and it looks like a regular light bulb the adapter in the filling tank is going to look very much like the cap and when you put it on you simply put the filler on and turn it and that turns it onto the bayonets and that's what locks it into place so that's a standard UK one the other fittings all screw into here and so uh, we don't have to worry about a UK fitting uh, adapter all right And one final thing is, now I know everything fits, I will finalise the fixing the um, changeover valve because it's so tight as you can see. I really didn't want to uh, fix it before I started because I just didn't know what was going to be the situation. I'm glad the gasset person said that you can put it on the, on the top because that's made all the difference. Had I put it at the back where I wanted to or initially thought I would, it would not have worked. I would have ended up with having real problems getting the pipes all fitting it. So, all good and uh, one final job to do, but uh, that you don't need to see. And that does it automatic? Yeah. That's uh, even better. So, well, I'm just gonna do a voiceover on there. Okay. And I'm gonna make sure you get the publicity you deserve for it <laughs> and then we're going to go and look at your other motorhomes <laughs> so we can plan for the future <laughs> looking to upgrade on and that lovely Thank you. and that goes on there right well that should help people so we know the filling process has been okay because it's filled up so any leaks in there can't be substantial so I'm just going to spray on those and we'll see if I open up 
this one. No bubbles there. Close that off. If I open up that one, there's no bubbles there. I'll close that off and you can see that the, that the gauge has flicked itself up. Took a little while. Right, okay, so there we go. We are sorted. I'll put the cap back on and we are done. And here we have the finished job. You can see behind here the changeover valves have now been uh, fitted to the roof and so everything is now working perfectly it's full you can see from the gauge and it's all nice and neat and ready for a few other bits and pieces to go in there and uh, job done that's it all done all done nice and neat finished this is what I use to fix the changeover valve to the top of the uh, cabinet because there wasn't a massive amount of pressure but this is uh, really strong stuff and as, as you can see it's construction adhesive and I've used this to hold up door frames and they're still in position some two years after so it's a good strong uh, and it also saved me having to drill holes and because I didn't know what was behind the uh, cabinet just there and I certainly didn't want to drill into the uh, in interior of the um, of the of the van so there we are all done and the nice thing or the icing on the cake was that it cost me 20 pounds to fill both tanks had i bought two color gas tanks it would have cost me 70 pounds so i've saved 50 quid just like that which after the ninth filling will mean i've broken even and after that it's just saving money all the way so hope that helps you and uh, it's been quite fun doing this too